Hello everyone and welcome to the Hawaiian Review. I'm Ryan the Wine Guy. Today we are doing Luna Calante Merlot Vendemia, which means Vintage or Harvest, 2015. Uh, it's about $11. I haven't really found much information on this wine. 13% um, um, alcohol by volume. It is an IGP wine, or IGT. And basically what that means is it is kind of like the baby of all wines. Um, not as baby as generic wines from Italy, but basically if a wine wants to make it big and bold um, and go places, it always starts off as an IGP or IGT, which means that it's met the requirements um, of being grown in a specific region of Italy, um, and it's met some mild requirements to sort of get to this position where they've passed um, some vindication laws, harvesting laws, shipping and processing laws, and whatnot. Um, and from there, they're going to be DOC and then DOCG, in which they have to meet even stricter requirements and even limited um, more, um, not production, but um, harvesting. They sort of, um, each process becomes more specified location-wise and um, better quality wines that have been around for a long time. But in order to get there, it always starts off as this. So this little guy goes places, which it might, it may not, never heard of it, but this sort of a brief synopsis of how wines in Italy are labeled. Well, to start off, here it is in the glass. Wow, very, very definitely dark. Little, little thick. Uh, nice ruby ram, but definitely getting really, really dark in the middle. You can barely see my hand uh, on the nose. Wow. Get a little bit of earth in there. A little bit of sweet earth. A little bit of like light spices, but I am getting some herb mm -hmm. I am getting some herbaceous notes. Tomato, green pepper. Getting some getting some like getting some red fruits in there. Cherry, maybe a little bit of candy cherry. A little bit of maybe like strawberry. A bit of plum. Getting a nice, a nice chocolatey uh, back. No, he, he's just he has no idea that that he's all he, all he's <laughs> all he's smelling is wine. No, so I can I can pick out some flavors and stuff like that, but but yeah. I my nose is not half as you know. DP has been doing this a lot longer than I have, so my nose is up in condition for that. There's also, again, sometimes with these Italian wines, there's just like just this faint, really whew, smell that is like, it, it, and it always seems to happen in Italian wines, just sort of like this like faint little, I don't know how to describe it, but it's always, it's only always been in Italian wines. And I just, so sometimes I'm never like, I, I pick up on it, but I usually don't like to like say what it is because I don't know what it is and um, but you know as you know all know I, I do sometimes get stumped and there's always just something in Italian wine it's sort of just like mixture of all the flavors together it just kind of creates this like I don't know just like harmonious you know what it is hmm. Imagine if you're at a carnival 
and you're going by cotton candy stand, you're going by the popcorn stand, and you're going by like the ice cream stand, and you're going by like the you're going by like it's like the, the whole line of the carnival is like you're, you're going through all the sweet stuff. And just imagine like after you finally like walk by, I don't know, maybe 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 now they're starting to get into like I don't know the the salty stand, you know, you're starting to go by like the the, the, the pretzels and, and whatnot. And then so once you finally like end at the very last sweet stand and you start going to like where all the like the food is, that's sort of kind of what it smells like. You smell all every single sweet thing you can think of and now you're sort of getting like a, a fresh breath of something new. That's kind of what this is. It's just like a a nice carnival in the glass. Uh, that's all I can describe it. Anyway um, going on to the tasting. Huh. It's definitely a lot lighter than the other ones. Mm -hmm. A lot more, uh, very smooth. Mm -hmm. Very smooth and very fruit forward. Definitely a very fruity wine. Mm -hmm. I don't mind this. Definitely, they have definitely very upfront fruit, upfront fruits of a little bit of spice, a little bit of spice in the back. Def mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. coming up very slowly, but not, not, not like the past couple of wines that it's been like very upfront and noticeable. This one is definitely fruit forward, mm -hmm. nice for me, nice cherry notes, nice, um, a little bit of plum notes, nice. Strawberry, a little bit of cranberry in there. A lot of a lot of those good like Italian, Italian, um, Italian notes coming up as he mentioned. Those little bit of spice notes. So it's like it's like uh, eating a fruit by the foot in the McCormick uh, factory. There you go, fruit by the foot. Yeah. Um, coming up with a little bit of those. Chocolatey cocoa tones. But overall, still, I think I can taste something like that. But overall, still, still, those spices really go away quickly. They kind of hit you in the middle, and then it sort of pans back out with that little bit of chocolate. But now finishing, finishing, still nice on the fruity side. A nice, a nice how Italian wines usually are. Um, just have really just good. Good smooth, just I mean these these are wines you can these are wines you can drink. These are wines you can just perfect for pairing, but you know, these are wines you can easily also just drink by itself. Um, now how is it? How would it be? What good, what's a good cheese that would be good with? Why does everybody always ask about cheese? God, because that's what you drink with no, the wine. No, I don't know why. I don't know why any. I don't know why that's even a thing. Okay, well, no. what about what about the Cheerios box over there? Should we just like grab things that Cheerios stuck in our mouths and they don't drink the wine? You know? No, I, I mean, yes, I, I do have cheese with wine, but I, I mean that's just so cliche in my opinion. Like, if if you're, if you're going to drink wine, you drink if, if you're going to drink it with food, you want to have like good food. This this is a good cheese? this is a good pizza wine. This is a good, this is a good, um... Which has cheese on it, by the way. You're not missing, but you're not just eating it with cheese. You're not just digging out fucking cheese cubes from the refrigerator. So, hi, Mom. But this is a good pizza wine. This is what a good, is this is a good pasta wine. Um, but it's, it's, not, it's not a big, heavy wine, so I wouldn't necessarily, like, Add in all the uh, meatballs or sausages. I would, you know, may maybe add in something light, like maybe maybe add some like you know chicken parmesan. This would be very very good. So so definitely something rich in in sauce, but um, nothing you know. Don't you wouldn't want to maybe put this with something very spicy. Um, you also wouldn't want to just have this with something light and bland. You know, just not you know don't don't just have this with like a a chicken, you know, um, you know, make sure you put something on it, like sauce or um, maybe maybe even like a, 
a nice light stew. You know, not, nothing too heavy, but, you know, something like a nice and light. Um, that's what this would pair with. And chocolate. You know, wine goes good better with chocolate, in my opinion, than it does with cheese. Like I said, I, I, do, I do eat cheese with my wine. I do drink my wine and eat cheese, but it's just so, so cliche. Now, now, dark, chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, doesn't matter. This one, I think it has more of a milky sort of characteristic to it, so probably more on the milk chocolate side. If you're going to have like, like milk chocolate truffles or just milk chocolate in, in, in general, Look at all those wows. But um so that's what that's what this would better pair with. I may I may bring up one of my truffles right after this and enjoy it with this wine. Um anyway, final conclusion. Being that this is a, a wine I have never heard of, I actually got it at the cut rate store up the street from where I live. Um but they, they usually have some pretty 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 nice gems to find and now this is already a 2015. It's could age it a couple more years, and who knows? Hopefully, after this review, people will start finding this, and maybe we can turn this buddy into like a really, a really high roller wine one of these days. So, um, I uh, another great review for me. I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. Well, four to seventeen out of two hundred and seventy-three divided by fourteen times five hundred divided by a black hole and an existential crisis. Well, if you can figure out what that is, please leave a comment. And uh, who knows? Maybe you'll be able to solve every the whole problem with the whole world if you're that smart. So, anyway, until next time. I'm Ryan the Wine Guy. That's a show. And cheers.